In 1890, Columbus, Texas witnessed a brutal clash between the Townsend family and Robert Stafford during the new courthouse celebration. Stafford sought the sheriff's office, challenging J. Light Townsend. When Stafford's son was arrested by Larkin Hope, a Townsend ally, tensions exploded. A deadly confrontation ensued, resulting in the tragic deaths of Robert and John Stafford. With Sheriff Townsend having his political enemy eliminated by marshals that he appointed, charges against Larkin and Marion Hope were dismissed, solidifying Townsend's dominance. The Mason's Lodge, once a jail where Larkin and Marion would have been held, stood as a grim reminder of the violence that plagued this town. Tonight, we delve into the reports of paranormal activity surrounding this haunting chapter in Columbus's history and aim to see for ourselves if the hauntings surrounding this location are verifiable. My name is Renee Long, and I'm the president of the board of directors at the Live Oak Art Center. This town got so bad during the Stafford Townsend feud that at one point in time, we lost our incorporation with the, with the state of Texas. It was yanked from us. They sent some of the first Texas Rangers ever in the state here to try to keep the peace. Things got incredibly violent in this town. I feel that the Stafford Townsend feud fueling the paranormal experiences in the town is the most logical explanation. I mean, again, it, and it coursed over decades. It just didn't go away. It wasn't, it was 1920 before we got our incorporation back. It was a long time. So this started, this started in 1890 and went through to the 1920s. I mean, it was quite some time. And not only that, but it kind of, you will still find people to this day that you'll say, oh, well, I'm, I'm somewhat related to the, to the hope side of things. And they'll be like, oh, I see. There's still a cold, there's still a coldness and a, almost a, yeah, well, you should stay on your side of the street and I'll stay on mine, which is bizarre. It's been, I mean, it's, over a hundred years ago, <laughs> so it's time to let it go. My name is James Kearney. Uh, I go by Jim. I'm a rancher and also a professor at the University of Texas. The Stafford brothers were murdered by the, the uh, Hope brothers in uh, July of 1890. It all came to a head in July of 1890 when they had this big celebration. And uh, Bob Stafford had a son named Warren, and he would get drunk and, and uh, you know, create scenes. So at the beginning of the celebration, with hundreds of people in town, um, Bob told uh, Lark and Hope, he said, now, my son Warren, they're going to have a big barbecue up here at the Grove, which is a place north of, in the north part of town. And he said, now, he gets drunk, I want you to just whisk him out of sight and, you know, not make a scene. Um, and he said, okay, Mr. Stafford, I'll see what I can do. Well, sure enough, he got drunk, Warren. But instead of sort of discreetly whisking him out of sight, Larkin and his brother Marion marched him down Milam Street all the way down in front of all the people in Anco turned right here at uh, Spring Street right here and there was a a holding cell in the middle of the street an open air like a cage for an animal in the middle of the street right where the uh, uh, law officer is there across from the courthouse and they put him in that cage for everybody to see and they marched him right in, in front of a Bob Stafford's house, which is next to the opera house there, where his mother could see him. So it was a deliberate provocation, any way you slice it. Yeah. They deliberately, and then 
after they locked him in the, what they called the calaboose, that holding cell, they walked across the caddy corner from the opera house to the Nikolai Saloon, and they waited, because they knew that when Bob Stafford heard about this, he was gonna be very upset. Sure enough, he heard about it. And Bob Stafford was a very tall man. I mean, you read someplace say he was six six, but I don't think he was that tall. He was more like six four or something. But he had a big beard. He was a very imposing uh, man. Whereas the uh, the Hope brothers were sort of small, smallish, and but um, <laughs> so Bob marched over there, and he said, you know, he got into it with Larkin, who, who was standing right at the entrance to the saloon there. And he started cussing him out. And um, in the meantime, John Stafford heard there was a commotion. And uh, and he he came up to do the saloon, too. Now, neither one of the Staffords were armed. But they uh, Bob proceeded to cuss him out. And, uh, and we have lots of reports, first-hand reports of this. We know exactly what his last words were to Mark and Hope. He said, you N-word loving son of a bitch, referring to the fact that they stayed in office with the black book, you say. And, and Stafford was an unreconstructed uh, Confederate, and he didn't like black people, I'll put it mildly. Okay, so... With that, when he said that, Larkin pulled out his pistol and shot him point blank. And when he shot, uh, 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 and when he shot Bob Stafford, then uh, Marion Hope pulled out his pistol and, and killed John Stafford. Right. So uh, they were both charged with murder. Uh, and everybody was convinced. Although it, uh, it's impossible to prove it, but the evidence suggests that there was this whole thing was pre-planned and premeditated, and it was controlled by the ringleader, Light Townsend, and his cousin. Uh, well, I should not call his nephew, uh, Marcus Townsend. Those two. I don't know that I believe that the whole city itself is haunted, but I definitely believe that there are some hot spots around here. I think that there were some things where the violence took place, and it, I think that when something is truly, I hate to use the word evil, but I don't, for lack of a better word, I think it leaves an imprint. And I think that those kind of things can be difficult to escape. And, and so I, I have myself, like, I, like I've told you before, I never felt scared or creeped out in this building, but there has definitely been a heaviness, especially upstairs. I wrote the book about the feud, and it's called No Hope for Heaven, No Fear of Hell, the Stafford Townsend Feud. It, it's published by the University of North Texas Press. Uh, it's available on Amazon. Uh, I have an author's page, James C. Kearney. Um, it's also available here in town at the library. Uh, we've donated all the the uh, the, the uh, royalties from the book to the uh, Nesbitt Memorial Library Foundation. So uh, they've always got copies of the book. The documented history of the intense feud intertwined with the very fabric of the lodge's activities, vividly depicted by torn pictures of former masters adorning the walls. We secured permission that granted us unrestricted access to the lodge. Our mission, to unveil the untold tales of the paranormal, intricately woven into the Stafford Townsend feud. This hollowed ground, previously untouched by investigators, sets our nerves on edge. As we tread cautiously through its uncharted corridors, the unknown energies and lingering shadows of the past awaited us eagerly. We went first straight up to the main lodge room. That was the first place we went to. So the main lodge room is extremely intimidating because it has what me and Dylan call advanced darkness. Um, probably the darkest space I've ever uh, been in, let alone investigated. Um, so very on edge and you can kind of tell that 
there's a lot of people looking at you wondering what the heck you're doing up here. So when we initially opened the gate leading up to the stairwell, I just realized that one, it was incredibly dark and there was just like this weird ambiance emitting out of the upstairs area. And as we descended the stairs ever so slowly because it was so dark, it just had a very weird vibe. I think Brian said something about like advanced darkness and that's a perfect way to describe it. It was, it was weird. Constant waves of energy that were emitting in and out of the room. We would get hits of activity and then this waves of energy would just blast into the room and we would be chicken skinned all over and I just couldn't explain it and it just would come and it would go ebb and flow. Very bizarre. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get set up here in the main lodge room. We've set up motion activated cat balls all around us to see if there's any kind of motion. Uh, maybe some of these uh, Townsends or uh, any kind of spirits when they come and they sit down, we'll be able to detect that. We also have the REM portal right here activated on this main kind of altar area um, over this book. And this is actually a sword from the Civil War, um, and not a, a replica, it's an actual historical piece. And if there's any spirits that are in this lodge room right now, if you can come and activate this copper wire and use your energy, just like I am, you see that? If you can come and manipulate that, that would be a very prominent sign that you're here with us tonight. And we know that that is a sacred altar to you. And we just want to let you know that we have full permission from a former worshipful master of this lodge to place this equipment on your sacred altar. So don't think that we mean any disrespect by putting this on there. We just want to communicate with you and we have permission. You heard that loud bang? Mm -hmm. So there was a tap on the roof and there was a really loud bang behind you. When I was talking about the altar? Yep. And how we're not disrespecting it. <laughs> Dude, I have chills all over my arms. I do too. So if you listen to me, whoever whoever's giving me goosebumps right now, <laughs> Because it's, it's very powerful. If you can do what I ask you to do, please, if you can come over here. Just like I am, you see that? It's fun, you can really make it sing, you can make it go off. There's also motion activated cat balls around the room. I wonder what the uh, the baseline for is for the building itself, because we're getting like Lots of like static. Electricity. It was weird, bro. I was just talking about how I meant no disrespect about putting it on the altar. And like, I just got like chilled. So the lodge is about a 0.75 baseline for milligau I was reading. You see that? Mm -hmm. 0.9. Who do we hear? Who stomped? Are you just outside the room? Please enter the room. Are there any Townsends in here? Marcus Townsend? Marcus Light Townsend, you were the sheriff. History tells us that a lot of the Townsends were Masons. Do you still come here? What about the Staffords? We know that Robert and John Stafford were killed in cold blood right across the street from here. Are your spirits around? Can you give us some sort of confirmation? What signs can you give us? Because we, we felt you earlier. What was with that static energy that we felt? Who was that? So I'm in airplane mode right now. Can run Spirit Talker? Yep. 
So y'all are a little quiet, so I'm going to give you a device that you can use. There's a word bank in here. Please communicate with us. I'm going to set it right here. You can use my device to pick any words that you want. That thing's in airplane mode, so it operates off of fluctuations in electromagnetic energy. It's in airplane mode, so my phone's pretty much as dead as a doornail. There should be no outside interference making that thing spew out words, essentially. Plus, this building's an old stone building. And uh, I'm kind of scared to do lights out later, because this room has advanced darkness. It is very intense. Yeah, we, uh, we're just like downstairs and looking up into the stairwell and you couldn't even see up the stairwell <laughs> there's no windows up here there's nothing it's just walls are you okay with us trying to talk to you right now towards Towards, to towards. Are you coming towards us right now? If you see this light right here, use that as a beacon to come over. Please come towards us. We have nothing but good intentions. We were asked to investigate this location because some individuals were interested if there was any spirits lingering from one, the town's history, and two, the lodge's history. Now don't tell us anything you're not supposed to, but we're really interested in some of the families that came in and out of this lodge and the feuds. So you can see actually on these walls right over here, some of them are torn down. That's actually intentional. So the memories here. Right when I'm talking about the the, the memories and everything on the wall, that's yeah. crazy. Uh -huh. So um, we were speaking to uh, one of the, he's a Tyler here. And he told, he informed us that during the um, Stafford Townsend feud, that they would actually tear down who was the uh, worshipful master during that time. And you can see it. I mean, history is literally on the walls right here. There's people torn down. And uh, this is towards the 1800s. You can see the pictures are very, very old. And on the left, it's, it's more modern. Over here, we're not sure who, you know, um, there's no, the legitimacy is in the records. You'd actually have to open the vault and read those. But um, we believe, you know, the Townsends were in here in the Mason's Lodge and the Stafford's as well. And they were taking pictures down as to who was in charge. So, head. We're looking at a, a wall full of heads. That's very... That's true. Yeah. As we are discussing the pictures on the wall, a very peculiar light anomaly almost seems to come out of one of the heads themselves, as the spirit talker confirms this for us. Could this be one of the Townsends or Staffords letting us know they're here? They were taking pictures down as to who was in charge, so... Head. We're looking at a, a wall full of heads. That's very... That's true. Yeah. You make a note that... What the heck was that, bro? What? I what? just heard like a loud whoosh. Didn't hear a thing, man. Whew. Who do we hear right now? The, the activities around these pictures, man. We're talking about the pictures and that's like it's activated something. Are you Are you happy that we're kind of... Talking about all of you on the wall, is that who's all looking down at us right now? Are you not just pictures on the wall? You know, um, you know, I have a very personal story. My mom would tell me that my grandfather would actually visit her in dreams through a picture. And uh, we have a family photo album of all of our photos going back. And that's what he would kind of like a guardian angel type of thing. Yeah. So pictures like they, they have a connection, obviously. But spiritually as well, they they hold a lot of uh, significance. Yeah, I'll show you all a glimpse of what we're talking about a little closer. 
which is interesting. The moment we started talking about the history and who's up there, whoa. What was that? You heard that, right? That of course. Tap. Of course I did. those towers right there. The pillars? She will touch you. She. She. Maybe an eastern star? But they wouldn't be allowed in here. I don't know. Well, yeah. No, they would. Eastern star? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, a, ma a mason would, you know, kind of be downstairs just kind of making sure the lodge is good. But they... Is it, Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. <laughs> um, who is she? Because we spoke with the uh, the Tyler, and he was telling us about this uh, this kind of prominent voodoo priestess that operated in the area, which has a whole another story. Big Mama. Her name was Big Mama. Is that who you are referring to when you say she? There's more movement. My knee, my knee just popped because I'm old. No, not popping. It was like... Well, if you want to touch me, go ahead and touch me, please. You have my permission. Come touch me. Right here. Touch me over here so we can get some activity on this. She will touch you. I want to know who she is. And I want you to touch me. Go ahead. You can trust us. Cool. I trust you as well. Please come touch my hand. You can trust us too. We're not here to hurt you. We're not here to cleanse the space. We're not doing any of that. We literally came here to talk to you. And then we're gonna leave here, but we're very happy to talk to you. Can you confirm if you are an Eastern star? Can you give us some sort of hint? Because that'd be very interesting if you're talking about she and you're an Eastern star. Light up a cat ball, touch the REM portal. We're family. I mean, that is a cornerstone of the brotherhood. Yeah. Uh, glad to have you. For you to have us, actually. <laughs> We're in your space. Yeah. I'm just kind of trying to be quiet and just absorb the space and see if there's any more like poltergeisty like smacks or taps. What if I turn this on? Psych. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I thought I saw a, ma a man standing in that hallway, like where all the hats are. Yeah, those are the... No, get out, bro. Is it evil? No, I literally... Ooh. I saw like... I saw just somebody just like... Just like, I don't know, just like... You... you yeah, I don't they know. Were, they were mad. They were, I don't know. They were like upset or something. They were just like, what are they doing here? Just evil. Well, those hats... Uh, can touch on those. The Tyler was... Please leave. Oh, 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 oh. oh no! Said so no. Please leave. No, please leave. The hats on the rack are. Yeesh. Yeah, all the hats of the former. You can see that, right? Yeah. Sorry. You're good. Are all the hats of the former worshipful masters? All right. So I just saw you over there. Um, I'm gonna place this right by you where I thought I saw you. No, there's. I don't know what's going on here. I want you to touch this. I'm going to leave it right there. I'm backing off now. If I saw you in that doorway, please touch that. It's weird, man. It's been a while since I've seen or thought I saw something, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That, it doesn't happen. It's, it's rare. If you can touch that, if you can stand in that doorway again, we'll be able to verify that. Now, I didn't ask if any of those past Worshipful Master hats, if any of those individuals were deceased or not. Right. But maybe, you know, pieces of those individuals, maybe that's what you saw. And that's why you saw it near there. Could be. You know, an article of clothing... You know, that uh, 
Well, the, so the worshipful masters wear their hats, right? They're the only ones that can. So maybe that has... Salt. Salt. Evil. Salt. What is this, an episode of uh, Supernatural? Need to draw a salt circle? Why would we need to do that? Bug. Ladybug, actually. That's Ladybug? Uh -huh. It's red. Come here, Ladybug. You want to land in my hand? It's probably attracted to your light panel. Yeah. That scared me, dude. Because <laughs> it was like... Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was like a little motor. Evil. Bug. Ladybugs are a sign of good luck. Sir, can you touch that REM portal that we left over there where I saw you standing? That would be pretty epic if you could do that. Screenshot that. Um, on some spirit box. Okay. Let's give the spirit box a try. Yeah. So we can actually hear what you sound like by using my device. So please speak through it. Who did I see in that doorway? Who's this uh, tran uh, transitory electromagnetic energy that we feel? Who is that? Can anyone on the wall tell me? This is a medium, this tool right here for you to speak. It's weird, man. It's like you'll get like mad goosebumps and there'll be like intense energy and then it's just like sound. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Yeah. The fact that it's like, I'm kind of getting tingles for some reason. It's like a blast of energy. Yeah, in. it's like a whoa. And then it's just like, oh, it's just an old building. So my, my question is, <laughs> what? I don't know. I'll have to review that. Yeah. My, my question is, is this, is this someone who belonged and was a part of this lodge? Or is this someone from the town of Columbus, a transitory spirit that belongs to this building? Give us some kind of clue. Mm, there was like energy emanating off that. Mm. It like went through me. No idea what it said. Keep trying to talk. Who did I see? Who do we hear? Who do we feel? Can you give us a clue? We'd really like for you to talk to us. We've been given access from one of your brothers to communicate with you. Please don't be afraid or think that you can't talk to us because we have approval from one of your brothers to talk. I don't know. It said, no, please leave. And that was just like the end of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm not interested in talking to you. Just leave. Like I said, we don't mean any disrespect. We don't mean any harm. We don't mean any malintent. Yeah, that was loud. Please keep reaching out. What would you like I to think, say? Ooh, we got like a, over a one milligram spike there. After that tap? Yeah. I think it said there's more than one. It's interesting. Are you referring to us? Yeah, are you referring to you? What? Sound like a woman. Did, Did mention she earlier? Yeah. I swear, dude, there's like an apparition that likes to like manifest in that doorway. Hmm. Uh, I don't know, dude. It's like, I don't know what I'm saying. It's like somebody's peeking at me. Yeah. 
Hmm. Wow, the 2.5 milligauss spike, the moment that happened. Hit max real quick. Yep. I'm not making it up. <laughs> yeah. Reset it, turn it off, turn it back on. Yep, so that's what, when we got that burst of uh, speech right there. That's what we got. Remember, this is a triaxial EMF reader that reads at a 360 degree radius. So, it's accurate. No shot. Bro, it's dead. I just placed the battery on this. It's a 9 volt. What makes this chain of events profound is the spirit box states stealing it and make them quit just before our brand new 9 volt battery dies on us. Could this be the spirits trying to make us leave? We got it. Remember, this is a triaxial EMF reader that reads at a 360 degree radius. So, it's accurate. No shot. Bro, it's dead. I just placed the battery on this. It's a 9 volt. Okay, boys. It's a 9 volt. Look, I literally just, this is fresh battery. I threw the old one away before we started because I'm like, hey, the battery's dead. Yeah, let me see it. Let me see the battery. Yeah. You want to pop it out for me? Mm -hmm. Wind chimes? Oh my god, do you feel that energy? I do. Someone just stole my, look, here. Mind frame? Mind frame? Yeah. Is it like dead. That? It's dead? Dead. You look at the energy on my, look at my chicken skin. Look, I'm like a basketball, dude. Dude, that's what. Weird. Why? Are, how are there wind chimes outside a second-story concrete building with no windows and no balcony? Where did that wind chime come from? I have no idea. And I heard. I thought I heard voices too on my mic. Look at me. I'm like a basketball, dude. I don't get like this. No. I'm, how is there a wind chime? I'm like that bothers me. That's weird. What was no, that? The, the, there's there's a house right, but it's it's like. 30 yards that way, and it's one story. How? Dude, I'm messed up by that. That's weird. And I don't get, I get, I, what was that, dude? What was that? I have no idea. That's a fire escape right here. We're on the second story. There's a fire escape that goes straight down. It's metal. There's no wind chimes right outside here. Dude, there's, a, there's ladybugs right there, look. That's where they're at. Oh. Yeah, look at that. Like whitewash for the... Is this on left? I don't know, man. I don't want to mess with it. Yeah. I don't know. You don't need to slip. That, that's some intense energy, dude. And there's nothing coming out of that now. No. No. You're like, yes, well, there is. Well, the weird thing was, is like, I felt no buzz on my tongue from that 9 volt, and we just replaced it. So hey, you have the energy now. What can you do for us? That's insane. That's a fresh nine volt. Was. Was. Do you so, want to roll to the, that other room we were talking about? Yeah, we can set up there. Um, it's burst energy, I don't, I haven't quite put my thumb on it, so. Yeah. We'll just see. All right, man. Well, let's mosey on over to the... Uh, yeah, we'll get set up in there. Back storage room. Yep. Let's do it. We wrapped up the night when we went into the back storage room, if you could call it. There's a table back there, some chairs, some storage, so on and so forth. That's where we stopped for the night. So as we traversed around the corner into that back room, it didn't feel bad. There wasn't a weird vibe. It just kind of felt normal. But boy, we were, we were in for a surprise. I don't even know where to begin, to be honest. Um, intense waves of emotion, intense waves of electromagnetic energy, intense uh, electromagnetic interference with devices, cat balls going off, uh, AVPs, poltergeist activity, the walls shaking, uh, you name it. Uh, and who knows what else we captured. So for the first time in my paranormal career, I had an empathetic response to spiritual energy inside of a location. And to me, that's extremely profound because I don't resonate with spiritual energy like that. And the fact that I was able to connect with a spirit like that and actually feel these emotions, 
I was going on and on and about and rambling these random thoughts out of my head that were so connected to the spirit. It was extremely strange and it was very an, an intense experience. I think my favorite moment of the night was watching Brian jump out of his chair when the poltergeist activity was happening inside of the back room because I'm usually pretty steady and Brian is, he's not scared of anything. It's just, he's a little jumpier than I am. And I always laugh when he jumps out of his chair because he's always like, all right, I'm sitting back down. <laughs> but that scared me. <laughs> All right, so we're kind of set up, and I, I guess this is some kind of meeting room or storage room. There's lots of uh, historical documents surrounding us. Kind of just wanted to go raw for a little bit. We got yeah. the uh, um, REM portal and some cat, cat balls. Out there on the pillows. Yeah, we're firm believers that uh, sometimes ghosts like to do fun things when you're not looking. So we're kind of what? covering our backs right now. What? How did my phone just reset itself? The only reason I say that is because on an Android, you have to pull the screen down, go through the pin. Your phone's powering on right now? Yeah, but you have to pull the screen down, hit power off, and yes. There's a lot of electronic interference, I've noticed. So what, your phone was turned off? Yeah, you literally have to... Do this. Like I just turned it on. What the f is that? Did you hear that? Is it my phone? My phone's not functioning. Oh, did you hear that? Heard. It was, dude, it was weird. Look at. I'm on edge right now, dude. That like, that was disturbing. It can't be a coincidence. My phone malfunctions. We hear that. The noise. That was creepy. Yeah, but look. Power off. Restart. Unlock. Isn't that weird? What the piss was that, dude? <laughs> what was that? I just saw a shadow. I didn't. That turned off? No, the screen. I just saw a shadow freaking run by, like uh, the pillars or this gap in the door. It was like, phew, it was black for a second. Like somebody just walked by. I'm tripping right now, dude. That was weird. Like, now I'm tripping about all our other electronics, dude. Make sure everything else is rolling, dude. Okay. All right, you have our attention. Whoa! Jesus right. Christ, man. Easy, easy, easy. That was so loud. <laughs> Alright, ground, ground. This is probably the loudest, unexplainable poltergeist type sounds we have ever recorded, and that is certainly saying something. Alright, ground, ground. Whoa! Jesus right. Christ, man. Easy, easy, easy. That was so loud. <laughs> No, nah, man, this is a, uh, they obviously do not want us back here. Okay. I'll tell right. you that. That was loud. That was startling. Who was that? And by the way, we're in pitch darkness. I cannot see anything around us. What is going on around us right now? We're not going to read your books. We, we know we're not supposed to do that, and we respect that. No, no, no. I just got, like, chills all up my arms and my back. Okay, they're messing with you. They're not messing with me right now. I'm not going to read your book, your lodges, your tomes. It's not why we're back here. No. All right, we're back here to talk with you. That was very loud. I I almost broke this table and all these chairs. I literally like like a bull just bashed through here. Like, there's no reason to be confrontational, although it is a little fun.
Okay. Hello? Something's in here with us. Yeah. Are you sitting in this chair right in front of me? Yeah. This chair moved. I feel like this chair is going to, like, out of, like, Super Mario 64, just, like, bash me. Like, it's just going to be like, like, I don't know. There's, like, energy here, and it's ready to freaking shift like an earthquake. Like, you know what I mean? That's what I feel like. There are definitely spirits here. Yeah. Or at least one. Run Spirit Talk. I think it'd be a good idea. Okay. Are you sitting here next to me? Same deal as before. So there's a bit of an echo. An echo, yeah. So. Yeah. That's not what I heard earlier, though. I can tell you that much. Please use my phone. This is like a word bank. Use it to write letters, right? If you want to write a sentence to me. Write a thought, write a word. I can better understand what is going on here. You can communicate with me as opposed to tapping and knocking and use your thought, you know, use your energy. Huh. Don't, Don't be fearful. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, that was very intense energy that we felt in here. Like I don't get run out of a room very often. And I almost ran out of this room. So for you to say, don't be fearful, it's kind of juxtaposed. It's different. The last time you did that, we, uh, something like that happened to us with Old Park. Yeah. Many months well, ago. Well, I didn't run out of the room. I ran out of my chair and then came back. <laughs> but I almost jumped out of my chair. Well, I did jump out of my chair. It's okay. Um, just... So why, why shouldn't we be fearful then? I was going to say this a minute ago that I was like staring off into space. But I kind of had this like mind, mind flash image of of a man with a gray beard, about like not super full, but he was wearing like a. We are not at peace. Whoa, but he was wearing a gray suit jacket with mm -hmm. like a white shirt underneath and like a gray tie and like gray pants. He had like kind of like slick back hair and like a bolo tie. Hmm. Listen to Dylan's description of the man he thought he saw in the lodge. We would discuss this days later and doing some digging through Jim's book. Could Dylan be describing Robert Stafford, the man murdered just outside these very walls? I was gonna say just a minute ago that I was like staring off into space, but I kind of had this like mind, mind flash image of, of a man with a gray beard about like, not super full, but he was wearing like a... We are not at peace. Whoa. But he was wearing a gray suit jacket mm. with like a white shirt underneath and like a gray tie and like gray pants. He had like kind of like slick back hair and like a bolo tie. Hmm. I think there are EVPs happening all around us right now. I think so too. Here. I think so too. I'm just like, keep getting chilled up, dude. Who's not at peace? Is that the, the Townsends and the Staffords? Whoa. That would make a lot of sense. All the murders that happened just for power. For the seat of sheriff. I, I wouldn't be at peace about that either. You know, killing people for power. It's not something to be proud of, is it? So Robert and John Stafford were murdered just up the block right here, not even a hundred yards away. Ridicule. Wow. His son. So yeah, um, gosh, I don't want to butcher his name. I can't. It was um, the Stafford boy. You can call him Stafford boy. Yeah, the son of Robert Stafford. Uh, forget his name escapes me, but he was arrested because. No, we're staring up history, dude. It's, uh, I have got so much chills all over my body right now. Yeah, Robert yeah. Safford's son was jailed. It's saying something. You are nice. Thank you. Thank you. 
He was jailed. Robert Stafford's son was jailed because he had quite a problem with alcohol. And Larkin and Marion Hope were appointed marshals by Robert Towns, uh, Marcus Townsend, excuse me. He was the sheriff. And he had held the sheriff's position for quite some time. But, hold on. Hear my voice. Please. You can whisper right in my ear if you want to. Anyway, Larkin and Marion Hope, uh, they jailed Robert Stafford's son because he uh, was interested in running against Marcus Townsend for the position of sheriff. And um, obviously, if you controlled the sheriff's office, you kind of controlled all of Columbus. Yeah. And they ridiculed him by jailing his son after asking and agreeing that they would just bring him home. So it's not politically embarrassing either because if anything about politics, your son doing stupid things is kind of a not good for business, so to speak. It was like a fingers crossed behind the back kind of deal. And uh, Robert Stafford got so mad that he confronted uh, Larkin and Marion Hope and the verbal dispute became so intense that uh, they shot him dead. And they also shot his brother dead as well, John Stafford. And, uh, uh oh, oh, there's. I'm agitated. I feel that. Because you're, you're moving things around. Are you agitated because we're telling the story of your son to the public again many years later? Tapping behind me? Are you standing right behind me right now? I got that like earthquake feeling again. No. Ritual. Dude. <laughs> what was that? My, my. No, no, no. This? There was something out there, dude. We do understand that Masons do rituals. We're not here to touch up on anything sacred that y'all do. We're here to touch up on the history of Columbus. Yeah, that is not our inquiry of this evening. So why are you agitated? Yeah, are you a, are you a Townsend? You're kind of guilty for what you've done? Let's try a uh, old school communication method. If you're a Townsend, can you knock like this? Holy smokes. You didn't move, did you? And you knocked and that thing didn't go off, correct, right? Correct. Uh, I've been putting my hands up and down. In the dude, place. it's like somebody's smoking on the ashtray or something. I mean, Ooh, I got chills. There's a Townsend knock, but it set off a cat ball. Look, okay, so just for, look. I mean, no, but you were hitting, I just, We'll do exactly what I did when it goes off. Okay. But I said, if you were a Townsend, can you knock? Yeah. And the cat ball goes off. Watch. All right, so can you knock? Like this? And I've also been doing this yeah. multiple times. You literally have to touch that ball. When, when, when you knock, do it like this. Way harder than I did. So that could not have been me. Mark. Mark. Didn't uh, Houndsong Brewery kind of used to be a, an emergency room type situation? Well, it was a wreckers facility where they would bring in car crash uh, vehicles open before the jaws of life. They would pry open the vehicles, but back in the day, the people would still be in the vehicles. I want to touch on this. I want to follow up, though. You activated the cat ball when I talked about Townsend. Are you Larkin or Marion Hope? They were nephews to Marcus Townsend. Can you light up the cat ball if you're one of the hopes? That light that you just activated? These things haven't worked for us in a while. What? The uh, cat ball. Yeah, run 
portal's not going off. If you were a Townsend that frequented this lodge, could you set off the cat ball, please? Could you make that light up again? Very strange. Mm -hmm. Go. Go. Like, leave? Like, you want us to leave? Because I was just about to say that it feels very um, calm in here now. Mm -hmm. Do you agree? Yeah, but we want you to come back. We're beckoning you back into this room. We want you to sit at this table. We want to have a conversation with you. We want you to activate our devices. And I didn't do this out of demand. I do this out of respectful ask that we communicate and answer some questions that we have. And I ask that in kind regards. So if you could please come back into the room and have a seat. The whole freaking wall just shifted. Are you, well, I just beckoned them back. Are you like porting through the walls? Is you? Yeah. Okay. I'm upset. Okay, I'm agitated, I'm upset. Go. So, oh, sorry. That was after my cell phone dropped? Yeah, something that's like, she was like crawling down the wall, sound like. Do you like live in this corner? Why well, gotta be close to me? You wanna trade spots? <laughs> Is that your area? That was bizarre, man. I'm like so close to it too, like I can't relax. No. <laughs> if you're upset, if you're agitated, we want to know why. Were you involved in the feud? And if you were, who are you? You made yourself known. Don't be shy. Don't be coy. Maybe we can assist you to not be so upset. If we can know a little bit more. You know, run things by a friend, you know? No man is an island. So what happened to you? Goosebumps like you wouldn't believe. Why are you tired? Are you tired of uh, kind of going through the motions? Maybe in the afterlife, constantly feeling sorry or, or remorse or regret? Bro. What? Things are like falling from the ceiling? Is your spirit tired? You just want peace at last? Yeah, so we're not at peace. You're tired of wandering? What unfinished business do you have? Were you a victim? I don't think that was my echo. What? Footsteps. Those were footsteps just down the wall. But I think we, uh, well, we locked ourselves in, but my defense mechanism is downstairs. One man here. No shot. Are you out in the hallway? Bro, I'm scared. Is there somebody literally in the building? Like, is the spirit talk a warning? Because I just heard somebody, dude. I hate it. I hate this on investigations where you don't know if it's like legitimately like a human being. 
and you're in danger? Or is it a spirit and it's so unbelievable that you don't freaking know? All right. I'm going to run an experimental application here. That was me. I'm actually going to screen record so we can throw it in later. This is called Ghost Tube Seer. And it allows the spirits to potentially create an image. So. And also, for those of y'all who've never been in this type of situation when you're by yourself in a building that you're not familiar with, it's always very unsettling when you hear actual footsteps. And very. <laughs> your brain starts like thinking the worst and you gotta go check. Like it's, You are not safe. So any spirits that are in here, you can put a picture in my phone right now using your consciousness. Are you interested in creating a picture for me? Are you coming closer? Ah, God, dude. There's like serious poltergeist activity in here. Yeah. Man. Is Make a picture on my phone. I'm going to leave it right there. Come sit right here. Sit right here, please. Dude. Dude, this thing wants us out. What is that? I don't know. Things are shifting around. I mean, we got you those. Take it. Just take a peek over there. Just make sure there's no mouse. There's no... Nothing. I can't. I mean, we would hear a mouse. You'd hear it like. Tick, 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 tick. Who are you? What is this? Is there anything dripping? I mean, there's all this old like cement and. Yeah, but paint. But it's like. It's not like. It's still. There's no airflow. I don't see any insects. I don't even see cobwebs. Nothing's moving. I'm perplexed. Yeah, but it's like seriously, like it's bothering me because I'm right here. You want to switch seats? No. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta ride it out. This yeah. is why we're here. Yeah. Let's come, come sit right here. Yeah, you know, stop being sc uh, scaring me in that corner, and I want you to make a picture on my phone. Go ahead and sit down here and play with it. Something actually just tapped me on the shoulder. Are not you for real? Team. I'm not kidding. I something just tapped me on the shoulder. My left shoulder. All right, like this. That's weird, bro. Who's touching him? Hey, do you want to touch him on the shoulder again? And you want to show up in my picture? Use your consciousness and show up in my picture. Touch him again. Come over here. You do a twofer. Just that was the longest flash burn I've ever had in my life. <laughs> Touch him on the shoulder once more. It's like something either tapped me or bumped past me. Because you kind of invaded its space. And then it bumped past me and then I heard noises over there. All right, we'll let you have your space back. Come back in. There's that sweet perfume again. It's a man, for sure. What? What is going on, dude? It's a man. Uh, it's pleasant. He's kind of sweaty. But he's also like got cologne on, so he doesn't stink. But you can tell he's like he's moist. He's 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 sweating a little bit. This man. Now, I'm not a psychic or anything like that, but sometimes I get these weird flash images in my head when I make connections with you. Are you the man in the gray suit with the beard? Show us what you look like on my device. You can imprint any picture you want.
I feel safer standing here. <laughs> What's over here, bro? It looks like there's like a black like shadow standing here, but it's not. What is that? Uh, it's just uh, a couple um, filing cabinets and whatnot. That one off? He came back. No, I was about to say I smell him again. This is a ton of activity, dude. This is unbelievable. This is the most haunted place in Columbus so far. This is insane. What was that? Yeah. yeah. Welcome back. Did you... I literally just felt air. Yeah. I'm, I'm electrically charged right now. It's one spirit. It's just one? I think so. You think it's the man in the gray suit? I mean, that's what I saw. In my, uh, you know, in those like, quick, like, mental connections? You get, yeah. like, an image? I'm smelling him, for sure. I but seen... the weird thing is... is I you saw know... maybe maybe the shadow of him. Can standing. you check that camera? What's going on with that camera? It keeps glowing. What do you mean? It's like glowing, and, or is it just your body hitting the IR? It could be that. Okay. Excuse me? So they just... I don't know what that noise was. I don't know, man. Nothing's working the way it should. To the gentleman in the gray suit, or whoever is communicating with us, make a picture. Show us what you look like. Whatever you can communicate with images. That was on demand. <laughs> what is it? It's a little girl sitting on the beach. That's weird. I'm going to take a screenshot so y'all can see this later. Yeah, I said make a make an image and this is what it came up with. It's a little girl. It's like an AI image of a girl sitting on a beach alone. Is that uh, maybe one of your daughters? It's a little girl with a ponytail. Did you did you visit Corpus Christi? Ooh, there's something on my shoulders, man. Ah, uh, yeah, I saw it like leave my body, like you know how I do sometimes. Did you put that screen back? Yeah. Sorry, I just wanted to see. Right. Oh my god! I said, did you visit Corpus Christi? Boom. I mean, it's a little delayed. Is that the Who's the girl? Or, uh, I mean, what is it? The Order of the Rainbow where it's like boys and girls, right? Something like that? Yo. Order of the Rainbow. I mean, I know we're not, we know about the Eastern Stars. Yeah, it's for the kids. I don't know if it's attached to Freemasonry. I just know it's like an organization for kids, but it's like for the betterment of, you know, enrichment of children's lives. Are you a, are we totally off here? Are you a child spirit? Little girl. You can give us another clue by making a picture in there. Go ahead. And, you're on me right now, so go into the phone and make a picture of what you want to try to say to us. Maybe it was a memory. What do you mean? Maybe that person is sharing a memory. Are you upset because you lost a child? A little girl? Is that why you can't find peace? Do you have memories of her sitting on the beach as a little one? Maybe down in Corpus Christi? Galveston, maybe? There's a river by her. Maybe it wasn't a, it was just a body of water. Maybe it was someone sitting by the river, the Colorado River. Yeah. Can you give us any sort of confirmation if we're hit or miss here? I'm standing because I feel safer for the record. I feel like trapped if I'm sitting because, uh, I don't know, that poltergeist activity makes me want to run out of here. Yeah, no, that was crazy. If you've come out of the room, please come back in. Hmm. 
Now it feels totally calm. So it's such an intense burst. Yeah, wave, but it's a lot of waves. But you don't know when it's gonna come. So it's like you're on edge. Is that right? You just come in waves? I mean, that's pretty characteristic of all these hauntings. But this is intelligent, though. That's why I think it's I see. ebb and flow. This is not residual. I have no doubt in my mind that this is an intelligent spirit. My gut tells me it's a man. Yeah. And I could just be subjectively, you know, associated. Well, with I mean, an experimental device shows a picture of a girl. So what? Yeah. Okay. Maybe that was his daughter. Yeah. Okay. It's such a creepy bell, dude. I don't like it. Mm. What the piss? So it's like, I don't know what to make of that. It is, I'll take a screenshot of it. Just verify. Can I see? Yeah, I don't know what to describe. Somebody's at an altar with some kind of like bell and there's like somebody coming through the wall. <sighs> what is that? It's so bizarre. There's a woman. Yeah, it's a woman coming through the wall. Or she's like a statue. Dude, I'm... What does this mean? What is she receiving? What is that triangle? Are you feeling something off that image? Yeah, I just like chills. I don't know. Well, you're not touching the table. No. Yeah. Nobody's touching the table and that thing is going off. I got chills now. This to me, like this. That's like, a, I don't know what that is. Man. This was something like very important to this person. I don't know why that just like blasts me in the face. Like this is like. Is this like the progression of like your, your wife? In life, like the white represents her alive and her dark clothing represents her near death and you miss her. I don't know why that just came out of my mouth. But yeah, that was like, how did you get that from that? That's just what it's like telling me. Like, it's like his his, his wife or something. Oh, that's so weird. But like, it's an AI rendition. So like, you know, it's like, what? Is that your, is that your missus? Seems like you're learning how to use this. So please feel free to do it again. I just, I don't know. Yeah, just like, yeah. I think that the spirit's like very troubled with, the spirit's like very troubled with. It's his, sharing memories and they're very like deep. Exactly. Like. What well, other memories would you like to share? We're open to it. I've never experienced this before, like ever, like an investigation, but I feel like sorrowful. You want to cry, huh? Not cry, but I just I feel, feel like, like I want to cry. Like my heart hurts. I don't know why. Yeah, I sort of feel it, but... Uh, I've uh, never experienced an uh, empathetic response. I'm very in tune, and I feel, I feel like I want to cry. Yeah, I feel it too, man. It's heavy. Okay. Thank you. What did this smell like in there? I don't know, man. What is that? This is too abstract. It's forming still. What? It's forming. I don't know. It's so weird. I don't know what to think of that. I don't know why I'm whispering. It's like I'm staring at somebody in a bed. I'm not sure, man. It's like a dream and you can't really like make it out. Is it somebody passing away in their bed or something? That one is weird. Yeah. First time using this uh, app, so bear with us, ladies and gentlemen. Interesting though, for sure.
You know, like ink, ink blotting. Yeah. Press, press up. You can put it closer to the cat ball, maybe. Could you, now, whatever thought or message that that was came in a little skewed, and forgive us, this is... I'll go ahead and uh, sit down again, if y'all will be nice to me. <laughs> experimental technology. But I just feel like you have a lot of, like, things uh, that you miss in life. What the heck was that? AVP, CVPs all around us. This is going to be a tough one to review. There's going to be a lot. Yeah, I know that, now that, that, that sad feeling's like gone. Yeah, I wanted to cry. I was literally like about, I had to like fight back like tears. I don't know why I wanted to cry. So weird. I'm just very in tune with my emotions, okay? Well, I mean, like I said, I just, I've never <laughs> experienced that before. I'm usually pretty like, Why, why connect with us? Have we earned your trust that we're not here out of malice? That we're here to listen? God, it scares me, man. I know. Oh, it's like medical. I'm telling you, dude, like, like something happened. Like, there's, uh, a, there's a doctor. Two, two medical professionals. Yeah, and it looks like somebody's giving some kind of like griefing bad news or something. That's the first thing that I thought when I saw it. Like the other person's wearing a stethoscope as well. Yeah. But like, to me it looks like a doctor like sitting down and saying like... Hey, this like, isn't hey. good. Yeah. And like maybe that other picture was somebody in bed like sick. Yeah, it was like a manifestation of just like unhealthiness. Did you lose someone to sickness? I can relate. I think a lot of people nowadays can relate. I'm feeling sad again. Hmm. I think he's he's tired. He's he's longing for peace. He wants to move on from this realm. But I think he's attached. This this the spirit is attached to life and the things that that the spirit went through, and I don't think he can let go. Am I right? Now I don't usually say this, but I feel like you're suffering. Yeah, it's like pain. And I feel like... It's like agonizing sadness. Yeah. This place is very haunted. They showed us bits and pieces of, of tragedy and sorrow and why they're feeling the way that they are and why they're still stuck here. I think that the haunting that is inside of this lodge specifically is one spirit and I think it's a man and I think he's very sorrowful. I think that he's very sad about what's happened in his life and the things that he's held on to crossing over into the spirit world. So I don't think it's bad. I just think it's a sorrowful energy, which is unfortunate. I believe it's extremely sad, almost to the point where I was in tears myself because it's projecting the memories onto you so powerfully that you will feel waves of emotion overcome you. So for all you out there that are watching this, please keep in mind, um, all Masonic lodges are private property. And if you ever wanted to do something like this, you would need explicit permission um, from the owners of that lodge or from members of the Masons within that lodge. Do not break and enter. Do not violate any of those rules. We treat this building with the utmost respect.